If you struggle against people with good slices and they just kind of slice and dice you, keep you pinned back and make it really difficult for you to win the match, you've clicked on exactly the right lesson. We're gonna be looking at a case study today from one of my Essential Tennis Academy students. This is an awesome match play example. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. So this is the point that he initially showed me. He said, Ian, I'm getting pinned back. I can't attack the way I want to. His slice lands super deep every time. And here's kind of the initial point that he showed me as, as an example of this. Good serve, good return. Here's the slice deep in the courts. And then he's struggling to, to get back there because the ball lands so deep. So on, on the surface, you can kind of see what he's talking about. Uh, this ball is landing, you know, a couple of feet from the baseline. It's a, it's a, here, let me show you, sorry. A couple of feet from the, from the baseline. It's a difficult shot. He's forced to have to kind of run backwards and try to hit at the same time. So how do you beat a player that does this over and over again? Well, first of all, there's not many players that can do this over and over again. And I actually, it's funny, I, I want you to watch the reaction of the player on the other side. Watch how after he hits the slice, watch this little body English here. Watch how he's like, ooh. You can tell he's like, oh, we've all, everybody does this, right? Every time we play tennis. Or we hit the shot close to the line and you like give it the little like lean or like the, oh man, I, I hope it lands in. So just purely based on this player's reaction, you can tell that they're not used to this uh, result being kind of a standard shot. This is a little bit out of the ordinary. I'm not saying he never hits this quality of shot. Obviously, it's very doable, but this isn't a normal target. It's landing closer to the line than he would normally uh, aim. Now, I want you to look at my student here on our side. At first, everything seems pretty you know, normal, standard, but watch what he does after the return here. He hits the return and lands with his right foot two, three feet behind the baseline. And then watch what he does next. What do you, what do you think he does next? If you were playing somebody who was able to just kind of pin you back again and again and again, where would you want your home base to be? Would you want it to be a little behind the baseline, on the baseline, or inside the baseline? If this player, his opponent, was actually able to hit that target over and over again, where would you want your home base to be? Well, watch what, what, what our, uh, the student does here. After hitting the return and finishing behind the baseline, he actually charges forwards several steps and split steps inside the baseline. So let's just say, you know, hypothetically, everything that his opponent is hitting is landing like right next to the baseline. Is this where you want to be standing against a slicer who's like keeping the ball pinned right against the baseline? No, of course not. This is not where you want to be standing. And so because of this recovery position, because of this home base position, it's what makes this shot so difficult. It's what makes that, that ball tough because he's having to run back and hit at the same time. So we're seeing several things here. We're seeing an opponent who, on this particular shot, yes, fantastic shot, great depth. We're also seeing from the student uh, charging forwards in or, and then running backwards. And so he's actually making this shot more difficult than it would normally have to be. Now, this is an, the, an isolated shot. Let's check out a couple other slices and see if this is a repetitive thing or not. All right, here's kind of piece of evidence number two. Watch, watch this point. We got a good serve to the backhand, serve and volley, which sets up an easy volley, and then there's an error on the volley. I mean, inside the, the service line, above shoulder height, you know, really just kind of sitting there, and just an unforced error on the volley. So this is a great tactical play, and this is, you should, if you're struggling against slicers, take a page out of this student's playbook here, charging forwards and then taking the ball out of the air. This is a slice that probably would have landed deep, but when you're close to the net, it ends up being a high, easy kind of floating shot. So the, we're kind of building a little bit of a case study here. This student recognizes the quality of the height and the depth of slice shots, and is trying to get into the net in order to take the ball out of the air. All right, let's find some more examples. Here's another point with the backhand slice. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm just kind of miss hit it. Unforced air, pretty good serve, but you know, it wasn't like a big, huge booming serve that he shouldn't have made. So we're just kind of getting a little bit of context here. This point might not seem relevant at first, but it's important information when giving feedback to a student like this. Watch what happens here. So we have a forehand from the opponent, the slicer. He drives his forehands. And we have another attempt here by the student 
to get into the net in order to hopefully take that backhand nice and high, get a nice juicy volley and put it away. The ball goes to the forehand instead, but watch the footwork of the student here. Where's the split step? There is no split step. There's no balancing. So what we have here, and there wasn't a split step on the previous volley either, by the way. I don't know if you, you caught that or not. But this is just a prime example of somebody running past the ball while the ball goes by. There's no balancing or split step. If you're going to charge forwards and make that kind of a key way that you defeat the, the slicer is by getting up to the net, you have to at least respect their shots enough to balance yourself. Otherwise, you make the, the job of closing forwards extremely difficult. There's too much court to cover if you're not even going to get yourself in a balanced position. So another important, we're kind of playing detective here, and we're, we're building a case. We're building enough context that we kind of understand the big picture of what's going on. That one isolated slice, yes, was a, was a good slice, and it was a tough shot, but it was made more difficult by the student. And we're seeing other slices that were missed or that gave a nice easy volley. We're seeing the student using the strategy or the tactic of, of coming up to the net in order to negate the slice. And now we're seeing a little bit of lack of balance and preparation. So these are all kind of the, the little check marks. Keep this in mind and let's look, just look at one or two more slices before we come to a conclusion here. All right, here's the next time the opponent sliced. Check this out. Did you see what just happened there with the footwork? So student wins this point, but again, made it more difficult than it should have been. Awesome serve, picking on the, the slice, but look at where he, he split steps. He, he makes a little bit of, of an effort to get to a better position, but is still inside the baseline. And this is a tough part about serving, you know, in, in all honesty. After, after you, I, you know, big athletic guy getting into the court, so he's kind of falling into the, the shot, using his body momentum to hit a good serve, that's great. But then if you know you're playing somebody who's trying to pin you back, you've got to respect that and not make this your, your home base. Professional players are falling after the serve well into the court and then pushing aggressively back in the event that the, the opponent hits a really solid, you know, deep return. It's not always possible to get all the way behind the baseline, but at this speed of serve, it probably is. And you can see there's really no effort here to get behind the baseline. He's just kind of shuffling sideways, hope, probably hoping to get a forehand. So from this position, watch what he has to do. Again, is forced to have to go back while hitting. And this is not a comfortable or easy way to, to hit forehands, it is moving back and trying to hit forwards at the same time. It's certainly doable, but we're seeing this pattern now of this student balancing himself and making a home base of this part of the court and then complaining that his opponent, well, that is kind of the whole point of the, the topic that he sent to me was, how do I neutralize this tough backhand slice? Well, it's kind of all coming together now at this point. We, we have a very aggressive home base. And I believe the reason why he has that aggressive home base is because he wants to get to the net. That desire is good, that's fantastic. But if it, as, uh, as he does that, if it makes his job twice as difficult of replying to the backhand slices that are deep, then it's ROI negative. And it actually makes his entire job more difficult. And then to add to that difficulty, he's not balancing himself while charging forwards up to the net. And so his volleys are more difficult than they need to be as well. So if we make the home base be appropriate, especially appropriate to somebody who likes to hit you know, deep and, and uh, kind of pinned back kind of shots, that'll make everything on the baseline more easy. And if when, if he can be just a little more patient and wait for his opportunity to close forwards, if he can balance himself while doing that, that'll make all his volleys easier too. And so this is oftentimes, this is what tennis is all about is finding out what am I doing that's making my job more difficult or complicated than it has to be and just simplifying everything. So this is a fantastic case study. If you'd like your match play to be analyzed like this, then go to EssentialTennisAcademy.com. That's where I'm doing these kinds of analysis sessions. Every single week I do an analysis session for all the academy students. You can submit your match play videos or your stroke videos and I'll do a step-by-step -step breakdown like this. This student now has very actionable, specific action steps to take to improve his success against uh, this, this uh, particular player. And you could have the same thing for your game too. Amazing job by this student recording himself, 
sending in the video, and now he's going to go and, and use what he learned to improve his game. And I hope something that you heard or saw in this video can help you do exactly the same thing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.